Today we are continuing our summer series titled, Know Your Neighbor. Last Sunday, we intentionally crossed the street right after the service to spend time with our neighbors next door at Plymouth Place. It's a small but important thing to note the difference between inviting people to us versus taking our hospitality outside the doors of Plymouth and out into our neighborhood and community. This morning, I have the distinct privilege of introducing Connie Ryan as our guest preacher. Since 2002, Connie has served as the executive director of Interfaith Alliance of Iowa. The Interfaith Alliance of Iowa is a leading voice across Iowa, engaging people from diverse beliefs and perspectives to work together for the common good. You should know that whenever you support Plymouth, you're also actively supporting community organizations like the Interfaith Alliance, advancing relationships, strategies, and actions for common good in Iowa. Connie is a well-known voice in the public square, speaking out to protect religious freedom while ensuring it is not used to harm or discriminate, advancing civil rights and fairness for those who are marginalized, and uniting diverse voices to challenge extremism in Iowa. Connie serves as the organization's lobbyist, effectively shaping public policy at the Iowa State House. Connie believes the best work in any social justice movement is accomplished through collaborative efforts and coalition partnerships. She spent many years building relationships with faith, civil rights, labor, education, and many other organizational partners, and is grateful for their work and partnership to create a more just Iowa. In 2010, Connie was instrumental in establishing the coalition Justice Not Politics, JNP, to protect Iowa's courts from politicization and attacks by special interest groups. Connie remains as president of JNP, which is the state's leading coalition on judicial independence. Connie has served on many nonprofit boards, including One Iowa, Iowa Safe Schools, Iowa Citizen Action Network, Friends of Iowa Legal Aid, and Iowa Immigration Education Coalition. Connie was named a 2019 Woman of Influence by the Des Moines Business Record and has been honored by the Iowa State Education Association, Iowa Association for Justice, and Des Moines Education Association. That's a lot. <laughs> Connie holds a Master of Social Work from the University of Iowa and a BA from Drake University. And beyond this, Connie has deep roots here at Plymouth. Many of you will remember Connie's mother, Pat Oberbillig, who served on Plymouth staff. Plymouth Church, let's give a warm and kind welcome to Connie Ryan. It is good to be with you, Plymouth Church. Thank you for the invitation. The reading today is from Colossians. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Creator. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, our God through our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you, just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world. So it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it, and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to God. As you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. 
May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Creator, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. God has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much to the leaders of Plymouth Church who extended an invitation to me to bring a message this weekend to your community. I am certainly grateful for the long, long relationship that Plymouth Church and Interfaith Alliance of Iowa have had together. You support us as you heard through your tithes and offerings, many of you through your generous donations. You participate in our events and you take action when we ask many, many times on the issues that are important in our world. Thank you so much for all of the support that you give in this work. I have to be honest, it is with a little fear and trepidation that I stand in this pulpit. Many bigger shoes and wiser minds have filled this pulpit, certainly your current pastoral staff, but also David Rui and Faith Veray and Matt Martis of Croy and so many others, and yes, my mom, Pat Oberbillig, I certainly do not hold myself up to their standards, but I do hope I have something to offer that is meaningful and perhaps might even challenge us today. Will you pray with me? Creator God, may you be with us today so that the words spoken out loud and in our hearts will be acceptable to you for the glory of the world you envision for all your people. Amen. When I was a small child, my family moved from Akron, Ohio to Cynthiana, Kentucky so that my dad could go to seminary. Yes, that means I'm a double PK. <laughs> and if you don't know what that is, it's a double preacher's kid and we are the worst kind ever. <laughs> we always cause trouble. Yes, continuing to. In the beauty of Kentucky and the intrigue of moving from a large industrial city to a small farming community, we found a small yet thriving, faithful community. As a child, I'm sure there were lots of things that I did not understand happening in that community. I'm sure there were the typical stresses of a, far, a small farming community. I'm quite sure there were disagreements in the board and with the elders. I was oblivious to that. But what I remember and what I felt was a true sense of community. People who were faithful to God, generous in spirit, and loved me unconditionally. I remember fondly the beautiful singing during worship, playing inside that small church and outside in the cemetery that wrapped around the church. I remember the potlucks after church with homemade food of every kind, particularly the pies of every flavor. I remember Ruby and Jack, Miss Virgie Bell, Mr. Clifton, Mr. Wilson, Lena and Ronnie Harrington, Patsy and Doug Hampton, Bobby and Billie Jean Van Hook. And I think about Paul's letter to the people at Colossae and the community that was obviously thriving there. Paul's kind and encouraging words paraphrased, in our prayers for you, we always thank God for we have heard of your faith and of the love that you have 
It is reaffirming and reassuring, isn't it? We have heard of your faith and love. We believe in your community and all that it strives to do in God's world. We see you. We see you. It feels good to be seen and encouraged. Many in this world don't have that experience, do they? To receive the prayers and good wishes from leaders who have influence and power, to be believed in for the possibility and promise of your community, to be seen as worthy and valuable as community. Our nation is in a tremendously divided and dangerous time, perhaps the most ever, who's to say? Divided by religion, politics, race, economics, and more. We are divided by who should have rights or not. The right to make our own decisions about our bodies without the interference of someone else's religion or some politicians or the courts. The right to exercise our constitu constitutionally guaranteed ability to vote without interference. The right to live free from discrimination and bigotry based on race, sex, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, ability, religion. Without interference from those who perpetuate hate in the name of a God that we don't know or a country we do not recognize. The right to marry the person you love without the interference of someone else's judgment of which couple is worthy or not. The right to have equal and equitable access to the economic process of this undeniably wealthy nation without being left behind simply because of the color of your skin, the nation in which your family or you are from, or the zip code in which you reside. We are a divided nation. We are in a dangerous divide over the value of our public schools, the independence of our professional educators to do their jobs without interference from those with a political agenda, ensuring every child sees themselves as welcome and included in the fabric of this nation and the importance of helping children learn not, not only about and from the virtues of our nation, but the sins as well. We have the dangerous and deadly divide of whether we have the right to go safely to a mall, a restaurant, a movie, a grocery store, a house of worship, a school, a parade or whether someone else has more rights to buy a semi-automatic weapon or walk around with a pistol on his hip. We have the dangerous, terrifying divide from those who operate through the lens of white supremacy and Christian nationalism and have suddenly felt empowered to speak their distorted truth and to take action to live out their twisted ideology, attacking community, after community and inflicting an insurrection on the very nation that gave them birth. We are a divided nation. In summarizing a book by David West, Divided Politics, Divided Nation, the Brookings Institute describes our nation's current situation like this. Societal tensions have met metastasized into a dangerous tribalism that seriously threatens U.S. democracy. Unless people can bridge these divisions and forge a new path forward, it will be impossible to work together, maintain a functioning democracy, and solve the country's pressing policy problems. We are in dire times. We can feel the weight of it every day. It's easy to feel helpless and as a result, do nothing. 
to crawl back under the covers and wait. We tell ourselves, it'll get better, right? The pendulum always swings to the center, right? But my plea to you is to understand it will get better. But only when the communities of Colossae rise up to make that happen. When the communities of Colossae who are blessed and seen in today's world rise up to use the good that is within their walls to find and amplify the good outside the walls for all to share. When the communities of Colossae, the communities like Plymouth, use all that they have to do justice and love kindness and to do so walking humbly not only alongside our God but also alongside our neighbors. For Paul not only was about praying for the community of Colossae, but Paul also challenges the community to do more in God's world. Paul says, for this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to God as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. As Doug Bratt indicates in his commentary through Center for Excellence in Preaching, Paul never stops praying for them. Verse 9 says, we have not stopped asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will. Bratt says, quote, it, it at least suggests that something is still lacking in Colossae's Christians, in spite of all the amazing things they're doing. After all, you don't need to fill a gas tank that's already full of gasoline, end quote. As a child, I felt the blessing of my community of faith, the love and care, the joy and goodness, the guidance and understanding. In all things, community must and should be about nurturing the children of God through the modeling of God's love. And yet, that is not where the story ends. As an adult, I understand more. I am called by God to do more than be on the receiving end of a good community. God challenges me through the letter to the community of Colossae to be fully, be in community for its benefit and mine and God's world as we share and thrive in the understanding of God's love. And also to be open to God filling up the community, filling each of us up with God's spiritual wisdom and understanding and to bear that fruit in the good shared work in God's world. Don't you hear it? God calling each of us through our communities of faith to heal God's fractured world. How do we do that? It's hard work. It's unsettling work. It can be dangerous work, and it's sacred work. In part, we do that by being open to expanding our definition and sense of community, by actively seeking out relationships personally and collectively, rather than hiding behind real or metaphorical walls that we allow to define us, what if we intentionally create community in different ways? What if we find new avenues to build relationships, finding new and meaningful ways to partner with others who have been marginalized or are fully on the margins? To be clear, this is not about communities with means fixing others or their communities. 
It is not about inviting others into your space under your norms. It is about doing the work to create real, genuine relationships. It is about being in real, equitable partnerships. It is about understanding divisions and troubles and finding solutions together, some of which are not very comfortable. It is also about being brave and bold in this divided and dangerous world, speaking the truth and living out God's challenge by taking action, bearing the fruit in the good, shared work of God's world, and ensuring the progressive voice of faith can be heard loudly and clearly in the public square, balancing the loud, divisive, harmful, and often hateful voices. We must use the power of our communities to clearly say we will not allow rights to be taken away, nor marginalized communities to experience further harm. We will stand alongside them. We will ensure they lead, but we will shield them from harm when needed. We will earn the name ally through our authentic and unwavering commitment to being in relationship and in community. We cannot allow the extremism and the hate and the harm to go unchecked. Write emails, talk with elected officials, rally, march, and protest. Uplift and care for those whose rights are being threatened and ensure access for them at every turn. Find the organizations doing the work, support them, and join their work. And most of all, vote. Vote in a manner that reflects your faithful values and upholds your commitment to the broadest sense of community, including those who are marginalized and disproportionately feel the impact of public policy and its harms. We must be active in the public square, pushing back on the extremism of these times and using our voices for those who have little or no voice. We must do this together every day and every time. I know a world not based in division and hate is possible, don't you? A world based in community is possible because God's grace-filled love makes it so. I know it's possible because Paul shares with us that sense of hope it is built upon. Paul says, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. And I know Healing this fractured world is possible because of the faithful communities of Colossae, communities like Plymouth Church. You have done so much, and yet there is so much more to do. I know it is possible because you have and will rise up to create a world where division and hate are no longer possible wiped away through God's love and grace and the brave and bold actions of our communities who are connected by authentic relationships and committed to the good shared work for all God's children. Amen. <laughs>